Hello and welcome, folks, to another edition of RSF Radio. I am your host, Joe Monday, and this is the podcast where we talk about what's been going on on the front page of our Street Fighter, among other things, and usually we have a guest with us to talk about what they have going on. Uh, but before we get to that, just want to thank you guys. Uh, it's been a week off uh, because I spent that week in Japan. Uh, and I thought, who would be the best guest to have on after coming back from a week from Japan, having a great time out there? None other, none other than Long Island Joe. How you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, dude? I, man, I am. I'm like raring to besides, talk. I have, I have yeah, so besides, yeah. Besides, back from Japan, what else? <laughs> I got so much to talk about, man. I, uh, there's so much. Like, because this was my first time in Japan. Also, I should oh, say. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, that's so, huge. Like. As you, as you might imagine, there's like there's That's a lot huge. on my mind on the front. Yeah, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, but before wow. I talk about that, uh, anytime that I have a guest on, which is turning into every episode now, <laughs> I like to have a a time and space for you to pitch whatever you have going on. So if there's anything you want to shill cool. right now, this is your time. Oh wow. Yeah, uh, all you, right. You get what it out at the front of the show yeah, because I, people I, don't I'm, listen to the end of the show. Yeah, that's, that's actually key. wow. That's clutch. I never thought of that. <laughs> uh, all right, so I don't have much. I mean, obviously, um, one we have uh, coming up. You know, my tournament East Coast Throwdown, which mm-hmm. um, we're still running. Uh, so that will be held again in October. Hasn't been any official official dates yet, but it will be again in October. So I guess mm-hmm. I could chill for that. Um, besides that, the only thing I've done different, um, I've honestly kind of slow down on streaming a little bit i really have to get back into that i'm really waiting for a game to come out that i want to play that's half my battle with streaming is that i just don't want to play anything so like and i can't i can't force myself to enjoy a game for a stream not sure if that makes sense but you know like i can't put on the act like oh you know i don't know like if i don't want to play i feel like my viewers are going to see that as well you know what i mean and i don't want to come off as like disingenuine or anything like that. So it's right. hard for me to stream if I don't have anything I'm like eager to play. So right now, there's not a lot that I'm eager to play uh, waiting for MK. Uh, besides that, I attempted to start up a YouTube channel. Yeah, it I kind of okay saw for you. A little, uh, yeah, I, I, I was going in for there. a little bit. A little yeah, bit. I was going in for a little bit. And then I was like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, this is like I'm a lazy. lot of work on top of <laughs> yeah. actual work on top yeah. of 20 gotta, I got to edit. I got to edit. I don't know how to do this. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Tough. Listen, man. The edit. <laughs> fuck editing. Just do everything live. Oh, do everything Lord. live. You don't have to edit anything. It's <clears> great. <throat> uh, and then you know, people that don't care. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it also, like, YouTube is a nightmare, like, in terms of getting things out to people it, it that's yeah, a whole that's, other conversation it's, it's fucked that, up. that's actually a problem that i i have with it is i just can't i can't make a youtube video every day because someone said something about something else and there is a, a leaked image of a character or someone said something about a mechanic <laughs> like i just can't do it like i i don't have it in me i really don't have it in me I but know. hopefully yeah. like when uh maybe like when mk comes out and other things comes up i can do uh even if I'm just uploading some matches or doing like, you know, combos or even like maybe tutorial things. So, but I got to get back into it. But besides that, I got nothing really left to show over. That's it. You're Those not on the life of, oh, that Chun-Li glitch. Let me cut a video. Let yeah. me edit a thumbnail. Yeah. Let me get, make, I got to make sure that my face looks extra surprised for this one. Folks. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't. I can't bite that culture. I'm not into yeah, it. Yeah, I, I can't do it either. God bless people that can, but I yeah, definitely more power to them. That is yeah, exactly. it takes a lot of fucking energy that I yeah. certainly don't have. Yeah, me too, dude. <laughs> uh, but other than that, uh, you just got back from Japan. Uh, I did. I was did. It official business or was it like half and half business and pleasure? Um, a little bit of both, honestly. Okay. A little bit of both. Um. But it was an amazing time. I and every time I go to Japan, it's I don't want to say I mean I've gone a lot. You know, so some people don't go to Japan like an entire lifetime. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's uh even though I've gone a couple times, I think I think this was my fifth or sixth time. I fifth or sixth, I don't remember. But every time I go, I get like giddy, like a little kid. I'm like, oh, I'm going to Japan. I'm going yeah. to Japan. And like uh, you know, when the when the plane touches down, you finally get in the outside of japan like out of the airport you're out of the taxi mm-hmm. you're out of the subway whatever the hell you took i, I always remember that taxi that, from narita yeah. to tokyo <laughs> fuck dude no thank you but then no i, I'm I not think that i'm rich oh me either of i dude trust me 
<laughs> but that that like first that first breath of like I don't want to say Japanese air, but just being in the country and being like I am literally on the other side of the world, and it's because I like video games. Yeah, and it's like it's I don't know. It's a very glorious feeling that that first. <sighs> I'm here, especially after the you know the 15, 16 hours of travel. Yeah, because it's, it's a yeah, long, it's, 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 it's a it's long great. plane yeah, ride. Great. I love it. Yeah, your ass is sitting on a seat. You stand yeah. up for the first time, and oof, I love it. You're there. Yeah, no. Uh, where, uh, where'd you stay this this time? Um, around? this time I was in Fukuoka. Ooh, okay, what side of town is that? I have not visited. I don't think it is the. It was the first time I was there. It is the. It's where Evil Japan was. So it's the where is it? It is let me think of Japan. It is the like southwest of Japan, far from Tokyo, very far from Tokyo. Okay. Um, and when I've been there, I've been to my first time in Japan. I was in Tokyo. Uh, I went to Osaka that same trip as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I've never been outside besides Tokyo and Osaka. And even going from Tokyo to Osaka, it, it's a bullet train, so I didn't really yeah, see you don't stop anywhere. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, I didn't really see much of Japan besides staring out the window. But um, I have. I've always wanted to see more of the traditional side of Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, I've yet to do that. You know, a lot of people say Kyoto. I think there's a couple other places that people oh, have told dude, me about. Oh, dude, you should. Because that was kind of half of my trip. I, I spent oh, half I in Tokyo. I love to go to Kyoto. Half Ky I recommend Kyoto. There's a fucking shit ton to do out there. Like That's awesome, dude. We only spent three days, three days there, but it's well because the other part about kyoto is that it's also very large but mm -hmm. doesn't have the train infrastructure that tokyo has yeah. so getting from one side to the other like you have to ride like a bus or take a bike and at that point yeah. like you have to it's weird to have to plan for travel in kyoto differently than you do in tokyo because mm -hmm. it's it's just a little bit more spread out and not yeah. as easily accepted. but regardless <clears throat> it is also a beautiful country yeah. Um, but I would recommend it. And also like for people who haven't been to Japan or haven't traveled out there or thought about it, uh, they have this great thing called the JR pass. Did the you JR pass? Oh yes. Oh my God. It feels like, it feels illegal. Yeah. It... <laughs> I straight up feel like, like a criminal right. every time I used it. <laughs> right. <laughs> The JR pass is the, the the JR pass and the Suica pass are the two things you need when you go to Japan when you travel like yes. that. It, that might sound like weird saying that you need two rail passes to ride, yeah. but it, it's not that hard, folks. If you go out there, it's not. It's, it can all it's be not. in English. There, it, at yep. least for the JR pass, there is someone who is right there as soon as you get it. That is like, let me explain this to you so that yeah. you you can understand and you're not and you're not confused. Uh, For the most part, I feel like the country is is fairly accommodating to English speaking or reading. Um, that's my thought, though. You know, yeah, I, I think it's extremely accommodating. Yeah. For for the most part, but it's also extremely friendly to those people as well. Yes. Like, yes. for example, not, with the not like coming to New York. <laughs> no, not at all. Like, if you tr if you are not from New York and you do not know how the, the yeah, subway si system yeah, works. You're a, you're a problem. <laughs> but you're, yeah, you better get yeah, out the fucking room. You have to, yeah. like, take a side step. You know, Hold on, let me wait until yeah. <laughs> this yeah, line are, dies down a little are, bit. <laughs> you are a problem over here. <laughs> uh, but no, like, in... In Japan, though, if you have that JR pass, you just walk up to the gate and you flash it, and the guy Time who's his man in the gate like is not even looking at. You. He's like, "Yeah, whatever, just like, fucking yeah. get out of here, like go on, go ahead through, yeah, get on the train, kid." <laughs> yeah, uh, which which again makes it feel like it makes me feel criminal. It makes me feel like I'm doing <laughs> crimes out there, or like drinking on the street, which is not you're not supposed to do that, but you can. Which makes you feel like, a, yeah, it, that, that, that feels like it for sure. It, it's certain it's frowned upon and people like you get looks and it's not, it's not good, but you can do it. But, uh, so any, about your business though, uh, you were out there mm -hmm. for, uh, you didn't mention it yet. What were you, what were you seeing out there? what did you get your hands on? Uh, are you referring to some of the samurai showdown stuff? Maybe. Oof. The Samurai Spirit. Maybe? Indeed. Man, I'm so <laughs> excited for that game. It was actually, I need to, I was like, when I played the game, mm -hmm. um, I actually played it here. I played it in America. 
Hmm. Believe it or not, yes, I did play it here. Um, it was a a special like, hey, we're gonna have this come here, and I obviously I didn't tell anybody. Everyone did assume that I was going to Japan for it, um, but it actually wasn't the real reason why I was in Japan. <laughs> yeah, um, but everyone was like, oh yeah. So, but I I got to play it here actually. Um, it was a uh, someone hit me up and was like, hey, like, do you have any interest? I was like, yeah. Do Hell I have yeah. any interest? What kind of stupid question is that? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, and you know what? Not a lot of people know this, but the first fighting games I played, like ever in my life, were actually SNK games. Uh, there was a there was a Seven Eleven around the block from my house, which I'm sure some some people have heard the story before. But um, my my family, the house I grew up in, well, I've, until I was seven, uh, there was a Seven Eleven around the block, and there was this little tiny like cut out corridor in the 7-eleven that had an snk machine you know the old mbs machines that had like four games in it yeah, yeah and yeah. that was that was like the, the my first recollection of playing a fighting game was actually playing like art of fighting and fatal fury so when i walked in and i saw the gentleman there and it was oda san and kuroki san and these are gentlemen that helped make those original games and i was like this doesn't this isn't his name tag really say that like that's the guy <laughs> That's him. Geeking out and uh, this, yeah, yeah. I, I was. I mean, I was trying to, to to keep my cool, but I was definitely like, "Yo, I'm sitting next to half the reason that I play fighting games." Like he's right. right I, I can touch his face. He's right next to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a gentleman. Uh, his name was Joshua, who was the um, who was um, he works for the company. Uh, I believe. I, I wish I knew his exact title. I feel a bit. I don't know his his title, but he was uh, he was um. American. Uh, he he works for them, so he was kind of translating and things like that. But it was a it was a very very cool experience. One to be able to play the game, obviously. Besides that, but being able to play, see where the games have come from, and actually, again, really, I'm sitting next to the guys that right. started a lot. And the uh, you know, the guy he's he he did the battle system for like eight thousand games that we all know and love from the Alpha series to Third Strike to some of Marvel vs. Capcom. Like that battle designer is it's the same guy, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, he he's responsible for a lot of FGC stuff. Like a lot and, and all the best games in like the greatest era of fighting games if you really want to call it. You know what I mean? So he's yeah, the stuff just, that again, people tout continually as the quote yes. unquote best games. The ones that get yeah, louder exactly, yeah. over yeah. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. guy. That's um, him. That's the man. Oh, but man, yeah, uh, Sam Show 2 has a very special place in my heart. Yeah, dude. Yeah, absolutely. This game looks very similar to Sam Show 2. Real. Yes. Yes. It, it has like, it has a mix of two and a little bit of like, when I say five or five special, well, the thing is there's no more D button that like dodges you and rolls you and ducks you like in five special. Right. It's, it's ABCD, which is light, medium, hard kick in this game. But it does use a couple of the mechanics of the newer Sam shows like, you know, the Isin where they dash through the character and it does crazy damage. And, you know, right. it uses, uh, it blows up the uh, pow gauge, you know, the rage gauge, whatever you want to call it. Um, but so yeah, it takes a little bit of elements from, from two and some stuff of the newer ones. Like, you know, well, Mostly five or five special, minus the whole D crouch button being a dash and a duck and all that other kinds of stuff. A roll, rather, not a, not a dash, a roll. Sorry, but um, it's going to be interesting. It's, it's definitely going to be interesting. I just hope people are ready for that game. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've seen in a lot of the videos what the pace looks like and what the damage looks like, and that's that's essentially has been Samurai Showdown for yeah. For forever, the only really game that was a little be different. Surprised about that? Yeah, honestly. yeah, and That's I, I feel like is. there is like like a big like, oh my god, look at the damage now. Look, there's some stuff do crazy damage. My one thing with the game is I I know Sam Show has always been, you know, very patient, very footsie heavy, very normal heavy, big damage. But there's there's in this game there's a lot of ways to do a big damage. You have your regular mm -hmm. super right, which costs the bar. You have your Eason. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's called Eason. Uh, there's the the Eason dash move thingamajig that you know explodes your gauge right. and then you get to do that move. But then there's also the super super move, which doesn't require anything. You don't need meter, you don't need low health, you don't need anything. But you get it once a game. It's kind of it's just like the MK11 uh, fatal blow, fatal blow. Yeah, hmm. the same thing. Like you have it once. But there's no requirement to use it. You can literally use it whenever you want. But again, you only have it once. You only have it once. You only have it once. And it does like 80% or something like that. Doesn't it also, remind <clears throat> me again, doesn't it, though, take away your rage meter? 
that is the 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 Eason move takes okay. away your rage meter. Yeah, because okay. you have to actually do the. I'm gonna say burst, but I don't mean like a guilty right. gear burst. But you have to do like the burst move, which kind of acts as a burst from guilty gear. Maybe can, not. You can do it on block close too. Yeah, think, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's kind of like a bursty defensive mechanic. Once you do that, you know the background changes the color. Then you lose your gauge for the rest of the game, and not the round, the, not game. the round, the game. So yeah, so that's yeah, the whole game. So that's that's that one. So exactly, yeah, definitely a, uh, a huge risk reward. But you still have even if you do that. So all right, let's say round one, you do the move that takes 80% that requires absolutely nothing. So then round two, you still have the ability to do a super or your rage gauge explosion plus Eason. And if you don't do, you know, so there's like, if, if it goes to three rounds, there's a lot of possibilities of how to get that huge chunk of damage. So it's going to be, it's going to be scary, but it's going to be interesting at the same time. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Because the other thing that that special move, no invincibility. Yeah. On start, mm -hmm. it could yep. be stuff, so you can't mm -hmm. just throw yep. it out there. Yeah, and the starter for the for most of the ones that I've seen, it's fairly slow. It's yeah. not like an instant like, pew, you know. It's kind of not like a four frame. It's got some startup to it. Yeah, no, no, it's got some start up. the screen. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm excited about this game, honestly. Uh, for pe so, this is a Street Fighter podcast, so I guess let's say, <laughs> let's ask what similarities it has to Street. Like, if I like Street Fighter games and I'm looking to branch out into other fighting games, which mm -hmm. is very common. What uh, what do I like about Street Fighter that I like in this game? Uh, hmm. Well, what do you like about Street Fighter? Do you like in this game? I, it is a it is a very very different game. I mean, obviously your emotions and things and and the basic idea of the game. The one thing that I would say is that it is a more footsy button heavy game. Samurai Showdown. Right. You know, there's not too many. Excuse me. There's not like uh, crazy combos for the most part. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of that. It, it's like, it's like patience and big decision making. And yeah. I don't mean big decision making, like waking up doing a DP because like, honestly, that'll get you killed in this game. You'll die. Oh, <laughs> you yeah, know? So, yeah, 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 you'll die. So, um, it's, 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 it's a certain type of very, very calculated decision making that doesn't have a huge risk, but it'll give you a smaller reward for the most part, you know, because again, you don't want to throw yourself all out there because if you do guess wrong, like I said, doing a, doing a DP or something and a character has the move that's going to take 80%, you're probably going to die, you mm -hmm. know, or even, even if you press the wrong normal, like a slow yeah. normal sometimes. Yeah. So, um, if you do play street fighter and you do want to get into this, I will say the, uh, it is going to be more of a, a slower paced game. Well, depending on the street fighter you're playing as well, you know, like when you're playing games like alpha three, that was kind of very active and you had Vism combos and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. It's going to be different than if you were playing like hyper fighting, you know what I'm saying? So this is kind of like a hyper fighting ish kind of thing. That's how I would relate it to more of a hyper fighting. Yeah, um, similar, maybe not even ST, maybe more of like a hyper fighting, more like clean the, cut. The damage yeah. is there. Like, yes. The damage certainly. is definitely there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but other than that, uh but you saw that in the US though. What did you see in Japan though? Now now I'm very curious. <laughs> Nothing. Are we allowed to say? <laughs> I didn't see anything in Japan, I swear. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I That's swear. fine. Fair I enough. promise. I promise. I promise. All right, but it, good food. But, How about that? Good food. Yeah, that, I guess that's the other I question saw, I asked. I then, of like, great what food actu in Japan. What actual cool stuff did you see in Japan outside um, of games entirely? Honestly, it it was more of of that kind of trip. You know, nice. like I just I I really wanted to. I was planning with a lot of my friends that we wanted to go for Street Fighter V. Unfortunately, like the, the time Evil Evil Japan was going on and everything, like right. the game wasn't out yet, so we kind of like mistimed it a little bit. So we actually wound up not going for Street Fighter V. But we spoke for probably about six months ago, like, "Hey guys, let's all go to Japan when Five comes out." Because my recent, well, excuse me, the last recent trip to Japan. Now again, Japan's a cool country, no matter what. Mm -hmm. But being into gaming. Last time I was there, it was when Five was out on console, and it mm -hmm. just came. Well, it didn't I think it was 2016? I think I was yeah. there, maybe 17. 16. So it's like, yeah, it's like, um, and I'm I've gone before, like for Third Strike in 2008, when Street Fighter Four was there in 2008, and when Super came out and AE came out, I was also in Japan. I went to Super Battle Opera Four. I think mm -hmm. it was Super. I don't remember. 
I think 2011, I played in Super Battle Opera for four, but the arcade scene was like, it was bumping, dude. It was so sick. Mm -hmm. You know, you get up, you eat, you go chill, and like, yo, we're going to the arcade from nine until they close. And I remember going to Shinjuku, and you walk downstairs, and this yep. was in like 2010 and 2011, and everybody you can name was at a cabinet. Yeah. Oh, there's Daigo. Oh, there's Mago. Oh, there's Tokido. Oh, there's Bonchan. Like, everybody you can possibly possibly think about that was good at street fighter was in those four walls and it was the sickest thing ever every single night they were in the same arcade playing from the same time so the last trip that i was there when five was out that wasn't there you know because five wasn't in arcades so it was kind of like it was a cool trip but it wasn't like we didn't have that arcade escape yeah of course right. we still went to the arcade and we played some japanese games and i played some third strike and mikado and blah 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 but it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't bumping and booming like that. So we really wanted to get that feel. So we were like, hey, let's go for five. But unfortunately, our timing was a little screwed up. So we didn't get it. Did you see any five cabs at all while you were out there? Yeah. Yes, I saw one five cab. Yes, I saw one. Um, It was the beta cab. So it wasn't the actual cabinet. It was just the beta cab. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Where Do so, you remember where you were exactly? Uh, I do not remember. That's fine. Cause I, like, I couldn't th remember that is the, the weird arcade. thing is that you'll show up in random part of Tokyo and then you'll walk by an arcade that just has yep. street fighter five here and you go, all right, whatever. <laughs> they yeah. might have like <laughs> one or two cabs and it's kind of a, yeah. a crap shoot, but that, that yeah. happened to me, honestly. Uh, you, you go down to the base, by the way, uh, the, your description of, uh, Shinjuku and Taito station there is like, it even has right? that special door to the right hand side. Where yep, you don't have yep. to deal with any of the other arcade yep. shit. You just, just go, go straight right down, down to it. Straight down. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, very, it's very close to the train station. So it's, yeah, it's just right there. It, it's oh. right there. Uh, beautiful. It is. It is not that way. Uh, even with the five cabs, I'll say that much. Uh, mm -hmm. But the five cabs themselves, what do you think of the five cab? Uh, I played a couple of games on it. It felt way more responsive to me. I, yeah. I could be going crazy, but it no, definitely I think felt responsive. Right. I think you're right about that. I, it's okay, hard yeah, to I, say. It, it's weird because, uh, by the way, folks who don't know how the system works, is that the arcade cabinets are all online. There is no... Mm -hmm cab to cab play on these systems yep. it is all <clears throat> internet based with that said yeah i agree with you dude it's like yeah it's tight mm -hmm. yeah when i felt that i played how many games did i play i don't know maybe 10 or something mm -hmm. and now but i i remember the first thing i said i was like wow this this feels good this yeah. definitely feels feels right hard to explain <sighs> Yeah, it is because but there is a difference though there's definitely is it a difference the the, the monitor because they're their view looks monitors uh mm -hmm. they're in 720p i don't know if it's just the way that things are wired or maybe just the the good internet in japan generally because by the mm -hmm. way fantastic internet yeah <laughs> you go and get a a pocket wi-fi yeah, pocket wi-fi yeah is, you're smoking it's going oh man smoking. you're good it is yeah. it is honestly better than than most internet available yeah. in the u.s that yeah. is like based on a landline yeah. uh, <laughs> no it's it's for real uh but the buttons are good personally i then this is just my personal opinion i don't like the sticks too much with the the square gates a little loosey-goosey uh but I play on an octo gate, so my okay, I can't yeah. be trusted. Like I, I, I will, I will agree with you one part that we're talking about this. I feel like the cabinet that I played, if I recall correctly, I I felt the stick and the buttons were too close to each other. Really? But that's just because I'm used to playing on like my stick that I use. You know what I'm saying? And my stick yeah. isn't. There's not a huge gap, but I felt like the arcade. I was like, this feels a little bit close to each other. I don't know. I'm but that was it. That was the, yeah. That was my only my only complaint. That could be true. If you call it a complaint at all, that's more of like a comfort thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That really is. Like, do you play yeah, on a, a what thing. do you play on? I play on a Jason's custom stick. One love to Jason custom, by the way. He okay. is, uh, he's the man. Yeah. He makes uh, the Panzer sticks. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. They're, they're like he, made out of iron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. makes a good, it makes a very good clack. I'm sure. It does. Oh yeah. Gorgeous <laughs> clack. Gorgeous clack. 
Uh, but no, the the buttons on the machine felt good. They felt like sand. I don't know exactly are they sand ones. They might be. Yeah, I, I I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm really not sure of the parts in the in the machine. Yeah, I, I I hadn't looked into that beforehand, but it all felt good. It was very snappy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, even though everything's online, felt good. Uh, the one thing that I found weird. Now, the cab that you played on, did it have a pad attached to it? It did. I was actually going to ask you that. I was, I was going to ask you if you played on your own. I wasn't sure if that was going to create some sort of lag because I remember the the machine I was playing on. I remember this was like right before the official machines came out. Right. But the machine that I was playing on, every time this one dude played, it froze on his side, not my side. It froze on his side. Weird. Yeah, it did was freezing up on his, his own side. Stick. Yep, he was using. I think he was using a pad actually. Oh, it plugged in a pad to the front I side. I believe it was a pad. Cab. Yep. Yep. And it was like freezing just his side. Because I remember I was playing. I was like fighting a computer or whatever I was doing. Huh. No, I I personally didn't didn't say I don't play on pad. Uh, I just yeah. used what, whatever was there. I, yeah, exactly. I've been like playing on a hitbox recently, but that's kind of another mm-hmm. story. And I could have brought that and done it, but I... I was like, fuck it, I'll just go back to stick for, for this trip. Yeah. <laughs> Not worth bugging a controller yeah. out there, even though you could. Um, but no, I didn't notice any of that. That's weird, though. I would, yeah, it, mm. it was just it was just one dude. I don't know if it was something up with his pad, but every time this one guy played, they, he, we, we had to get the uh, technician over to like open the cabinet and do something. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking weird. But yep. Because the... So it's we it is a weird system though because I feel like it's kind of the wild west out there for for all of those cabs because in addition to that front panel it's like this little front panel that's next to the existing stick so you can plug in whatever controller you want yeah, to have that yeah. in front of you but in addition to that the, these cabs also have I don't know if the uh, there's another USB port in the back I didn't follow it but it's not front facing is that you can plug some other thing in. And I say some other thing cause it was different in different places. The first machine I saw, which was in a arcade in, uh, we were in Kitazawa for, for a hot second, saw an arcade walked down. There were two cabs. Both of them had PS three controllers. Really? Like already attached to them already. Like attached for people to, to play on. To play on, like, hmm. and they were like, like locked not in. someone else's, right? Yeah, not like someone not else's. someone else's. Yeah, they had like huh. there was machinery attached to this shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like where you can't, you cannot get this shit yeah. out. Yeah, you're not getting this off, homie. No, but like, it, it, I actually had like it broke my mind because initially I saw it and I was like, oh, these come with DS4s, and then someone was like, yo, dog, that's a PS3 controller, and I was like, wait a minute. That's a PS3 controller. That's <laughs> like, so random. That is incredibly random, right? That that's not something that has ever come standard for uh, for Street Fighter V at all. Then in Shinjuku Taito Station, there's some cabs have no controller at all attached to them, and one that I saw had a Hori fighting. Uh, hmm, what's the fucking name of the pad? Is that the fighting edge or the fighting... But another pad attached to it? A different pad. That that Specifically wow. that hoary, hoary fighting pad. The one with the six face buttons on yeah, it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, like yeah, a Saturn pad, right? Attached to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Hold the fuck up. That it, is interesting. It must just be something where whoever is running the arcade can just say, well, we yeah, have these, these. <laughs> these parts lying around. I guess let's attach this, I guess, which is strange. That's uh, interesting. But that is, but that is weird that plugging something into the front, a, like a DS four would cause it to, to bust up a little bit. That is. Yeah. Hmm. Cause other than that, I had a pretty good, pretty solid experience playing. However, I will say I did run into a situation where, uh, for people who don't or haven't seen it or don't know how it works is that, it searches for matches while you are either playing through the arcade mode or in the eight minutes of training mode time that it allots you if you choose training mode. So I was like, okay, I'll pick arcade mode because surely there's more time to search for matches than just the eight minutes. Like in my mind, that makes sense. But 
I went through all of arcade mode, blocking and you didn't the whole get a time. Single match? Didn't get a single match. Wow. I was in Shinju. I was there that whole time, just sitting there waiting, looking at other people getting matches all around <laughs> me, being like, man. Just holding down back wow. on the stick, looking left and right, like, are you fucking me right now? Like, <laughs> am I doing something wrong? I, I thought for, I thought I was yeah. doing something. I was like, am I searching for a match? And like, I was with Doc Fugu at the time. He's like, yeah, it says you're searching for a match because I, I can't read Japanese. He's like, yeah, yeah. it says you're says you're searching. And I'm like, yeah. oh, <clears throat> okay, yeah, but no match. Wow. So that was the one of the few times Japan was able to take a hundred yen off of me. Uh, <laughs> never again. Never again. <laughs> never again <laughs> we take my hundred yen. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, it is, the arcade experience there is, I mean, probably a lot different from what it was like in 2008 for sure, or yeah. 2009. Uh, but in other news, what else do you see in, in Japan? Anything else of note? No, honestly, um, didn't really see much of, uh, well, I did enjoy where I was, you know, being, being over there, it was, um, less of the Tokyo crowd, you know, mm. yeah, uh, and you know, me, away, yeah. yeah, me being from New York and going to Tokyo is almost the same thing. It just, wait, I don't want to say the same thing. It's, I guess it's only space wise being in New York is just as tight as being in Tokyo, maybe even Probably not, not even that. It's like Tokyo is really tight. Uh, mm. But, you know, just like a lot of people around, a lot of action, very busy. But uh, where I was staying was way more calm, way more calm. So it was a, a different change of pace for me in, uh, as far as being in Japan. But it was cool, man. I love it. Every time I go. The, did you catch any of the cherry blossom spots? I did not. I, that's another thing I wanted to do. I always wanted to go during like the, the, the season season, you know? Oh man, there were so many good spots for cherry blossoms. Uh, no, I, I'm I'm a bum, man. Dude. I'm a bum. Oh man, so many good <laughs> parks. So many good <laughs> parks. Although, so you know how all of Japan is like extremely clean, right? Yes. Like there's no litter anywhere. There's another weird thing, hardly any like public trash cans. Oh my god, I was just going to ask you that. I was going to say it's clean, <laughs> but how hard is it to find a fucking garbage pail? It's in possible right it's there's zero it, it is impossible <laughs> i remember carrying garbage in my backpack for fucking hours like can i just yeah. get a trash can please <laughs> like how how is no one throwing his shit on the floor there's in recycling York, bins there's the near... mess everywhere yeah exactly and th uh, there's recycling bins near the, the like the drink machines that are, yes, that are fucking yes, yes. everywhere yeah sometimes not always but there's almost never trash cans. Almost and not a never. single piece of trash on the floor. <laughs> it is buck wild. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> so like with that said, with that in mind, so we went to a park. We saw a bunch of parks while we were out in Japan. Uh, but one park in particular during uh, Sakura season was in Kichijoji. Uh, the park is... I'm going to lose the name. Uh, regards, it, it's like the one big park in Kijijoji. There's a lake. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful park. But the thing about it is that when you go it, during this season, apparently in Japan, it's like where everyone goes. There's a mm. ton of people there. It was packed. There were literally, like, basically they built these huge trash cans out of like, they put stakes in the ground, <laughs> six feet tall stakes, covered them in tarps, having like these huge, like I want to say 20 foot by 20 foot trash cans that people were just chucking garbage into. That's it crazy. Was the filthiest thing I saw in Japan free. <laughs> it was it, because I imagine everyone there is not used to throwing trash anywhere. They're yeah, yeah. trash fucking everywhere. In this, That's like, crazy. In this beautiful park, like <laughs> you look to the to the right, there, it's this beautiful lake. Uh, cherry blossoms are fully in bloom, and everyone's. It, it's a be it, it It's gorgeous. Then you look to your left, and there's this a mountain of trash. <laughs> That's crazy. It was insane, <clears throat> based on at least based on my experience. But yeah, <laughs> uh, that was a good and tons of drunk. People. There was, I saw vomit on the street. There, wow! In the park, I I've seen some people like Shibuya meltdown in Japan a couple <laughs> of times. I've seen it. I've seen it a couple of times. 
Oh, uh, well. I mean, I assume it's just from... It's that season, man. People go buck wild for these cherry blossoms, man. Uh, they can't. They can't handle it. Uh, another question that I wanted to ask you. Yes, uh, please. Separate, anything separate from Japan? Uh, well, maybe not it. separate from Japan, but Sekiro is out. Oh, that's a yes. video game that exists. I haven't. Sadly, it it released like two days before i left for japan yeah. and i had i'm like still recovering jet lag yeah. from <laughs> coming back uh which is also a fucking nightmare uh yeah on the way it's going to it feels good because you're super awake late at night yeah coming, oh it's not good no. uh but souls games I are heard, you a souls fan i heard that you like souls games I, my God, do I? Are true? you a Souls fan, my friend? Jesus, oh my God, so much, so much. Good. De- Demon Souls on, dude. Like, yes, you played, I played smart, that. Smart man, smart man. Oof. It was yes. actually to the point where mm, I played Demon Souls, and then when I heard Dark Souls was coming out, and that it was, I was like, nah, that's not that. I like, I didn't want to play Dark Souls. Cause I was like, it doesn't feel <laughs> real to me. There's, yeah. you can, you can have healing items. Like you just, yeah. it recovers. Fuck that. Uh, yeah. That sucks. That's stupid. <laughs> that's cheating. But that's, <laughs> but I was dumb and young and obviously an idiot because it's one of the best <laughs> games of all time. But yeah. Uh, with that said, I feel like there's, I know that this is a street fighter podcast, but again, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like there's a very, there's a common thread throughout the way that souls games play that is not dissimilar to how fighting games function mm-hmm. uh particularly in my opinion when i see a boss and i'm just you know walking around trying to get a feel for how this boss works it mm-hmm. whiffs a big fucking normal right whiff punish that's a whiff punish folks whiff punish you get in it's whiff punishing all day let's see it's spacing all day <laughs> You just got to walk outside of it, not a roll at the last minute because rolls have recovery. You just got to stand right outside. Very easy to do. Yep. Uh, But when you play souls though, are you into like competitive, Mm -hmm. like PVP souls? Honestly, honestly, not really. I, I played PVP a little bit during dark souls one and dark souls two. Very briefly did I do it in Dark Souls 3. I remember trying in Bloodborne. I wasn't a fan of Bloodborne PvP because everyone was just like working around shooting cannons. And I was like, this is stupid. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, but I did a little bit in Souls 1 and Souls 2. And again, slightly in Souls 3. I was just more about... I don't know. Those those games are just special. I, I don't know how to how to describe it. I will say this. I will I will completely admit that I bought Demon Souls in chinatown when it came out in asia no i'd have a japanese version i had i had like the i don't know was, i think it was called the asian version i don't know if it was chinese or whatever it was like an asian version of the game i bought it so i bought it before it came out in america i bought it in chinatown fair and not chinatown fair jesus i was at chinatown fair but i bought it in <laughs> chinatown um and i brought the game home i played it and guess what hmm. i thought it was the shittiest fucking game i've ever played that's the experience. Yes. I was like, this game is stupid. <laughs> like, this is dumb. This doesn't make sense. This is idiotic. What's going on? I don't get it. This game sucks. Put it on my shelf. Mm-hmm. It, and then one day, I don't know what happened. I can't, I can't explain it. You ever get bored and you just start playing games? You have like, oh, I have this game. Let me try it again. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Where maybe you play a game and like, hey, you know what? I'll pop this back in. So that's what happened with Demon Souls. I, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? I have off today, whatever. And this is like a, this, like, this is like almost 10 years ago. So I'm like, whatever. Yeah. I'll try it again. So I put it in and I was really paying attention and like really trying to understand. I picked a certain class and I was like, I'm like, all right, this makes more sense. And then just as the game went on, I just liked it more and more and more and more. And it was like, and then I was like, this is the best game i've ever played in my life like this is it i found it i found the best game ever and a lot of people have that same experience a lot of people my friend john who also runs east coast throwdown alongside me he did not like dark souls i was like john it's a grown-up zelda i'm like 
you love Zelda. I'm like, you're going to play a grown up Zelda game. Like it's really, it's very, very similar. And John is the same thing. What the fuck is this? It doesn't make any sense. This is fucking stupid. What is going on? And then slowly but surely, he's like, okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. And then he's like, this is the best game I've ever played. I'm like, exactly. Once you get over that hump, the games just become something that you can't get anywhere else. You feel something or you get an experience or mm-hmm. just playing the game. Like only those games create that experience. It's very hard to explain. And you slowly learn systems too. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's yep. never all at once. Never. Mm-hmm. There's no and, way of approaching it where you go, Oh, okay. I, you can't see into the matrix there. You just have to take your yeah. lumps mm-hmm. and, and slowly get it. But it's just like when I used to go into Chinatown and yes. Justin used to beat me every wow. fucking day for years and he, he would still beat me every day for years fuck but it's the same game. thing I like don't know how to yeah play it. <laughs> yeah fuck yeah the same thing it's the same thing like justin was the boss you know the going in dark souls justin both justin ornstein is ornstein and, and Smo. <laughs> justin is ornstein and Smo. like that is justin and i was like fuck i can't fucking beat him just like that you know and then you learn maybe all right by the way again i probably beaten justin like three times in my entire life ever but point, point, point is is that like when you get the dub you're like fuck i did it i got the dub i yeah, did it, it and feels, it's, it's the same yeah. exact feeling yeah, it's the same exact feeling. it could be and i i just use justin because that's someone i grew up playing with you know but it could be anything and it doesn't have to be fighting games it could be anything it's it's like it's just overcoming that obstacle, be it in fighting games or that just your demon in fighting games, or maybe it's a specific and it, it could be a combo. It could be anything, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. souls games create that experience where there's a huge hurdle to jump over. And that's why there, there is a whole conspiracy about people cheating in Sekiro and talking how the game needs an easy mode, but like people don't get like that's the way these games were made since 2008. Yeah. And there's a reason for it because it's supposed to give you that sense of accomplishment and the sense that you know what? I because I remember playing e- even uh Sekiro being like, yo, this is fucking impossible. Like this is so hard. Mm-hmm. But then as you play the game, you learn more and you get better and shit becomes easier. And then you know, you start winning a little more, just like, again, me playing Justin or whoever else you want to call it, you know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. whatever your hurdle is, like you start to slowly get better at it and you realize that what you said was impossible, like you're doing it. Like I remember fighting the boss, like this is impossible. And now, of course I did it. And now I'm so much more comfortable with things that happen later in the game and so on and so forth. But yeah, these games create this hurdle that are meant for us to jump over by ourselves. You know what right. I mean? That's for That's what the whole game is about. And some people just don't get it. Because, like, sometimes there's a boss. If the boss doesn't know how to block fireball spam, keep throwing fireballs. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about figuring out that that part of it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, figuring out, all right, what? okay, I found it. He's weak to fireballs. Like, the answer is there. You know what I'm saying? If the that boss is, is really good at anti-airing you, stick to the ground. Yeah, Stop don't jump. jumping. <laughs> yeah, don't jump. <laughs> That's the key. Mm-hmm. No, because there's so many moments like that. Have you ever had this moment in a Souls game? Because I feel like this is also true of fighting games. Is you've been smashing your head against a boss or uh, or a path to a boss, and you're just like, ah, you know what? It's late. I'm fed up. I'm done. You go to bed, take a day, come back to it the next day, beat it first try. Absolutely. Happens all the time. The information has stored in your brain somewhere Mm -hmm. of, oh, this is how you do this. Mm -hmm. And then immediately it's something snaps in your brain. I feel like that's very true of fighting games as well of, man, I'm just, I just keep getting thrashed. I'm just stuck in my ways here. You take a day and you go, oh, I'm, I shouldn't mash crouch tech every yes in between block strings yeah and it just it <laughs> just clicks there's something mm-hmm. that happens that, that it happens all the time it's weird uh it happens all the time but no uh so second is out what's your what's your take on that game while we're <clears throat> while we're on it i mean i haven't played it yet so like okay no spoilers but right. absolutely not i will not spoil anything um thank you the a couple of things uh the uh, how do I say this without spoiling it? I'm trying to think. Also, for the viewers out there who haven't played it, first of all, if you've never played a Souls game, I highly recommend playing this game. Like it's it's a new take on on the those style of games, so you don't need any Souls. Honestly, having Souls experience sometimes makes this game harder because your muscle memory is ass backwards. Yeah, like the the things you want to do because you're used to playing Souls games 
they don't work well in this game. That so can it's actually can Souls sometimes games, even. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Dark absolutely, Souls yeah. to Dark Souls Two, those are two different games. Yep. And Bloodborne is a totally different, like you know, Completely. feel for it more more agile. Uh, but this game is it's totally different. So I would highly recommend playing it. I thought the game it's it it is a superb game, superb, one hundred percent superb. A couple of things I I I didn't like so much. Um, I actually just turned it back on. Now I beat the game like the second day it came out. The first day <laughs> okay. I got the game, yeah. The, the first day I got the game, I think I streamed for like twenty two hours or something stupid like oh, that. Twenty two hours, yeah. It was something dumb like that. Well, you uh, had, so I was. Did you just yeah, come hard. back from Japan at that point? Yes. When was your trip? Okay. Uh, a little bit before it. Okay, because that makes sense. Because yeah. when you come back from Japan, <clears throat> nighttime is fucking whatever. Yeah, you they, yeah, right, yeah, it's shot. Yeah, right it's shot. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um sorry, again the game is great sorry game is great i the the game lacks at least for me a a serious replay value because mm. you can't customize your character you don't pick up other weapons so you, you know in souls games actually now that we were talking about souls and fighting games every mm. weapon in the souls game it's like it's like picking a different character it's like yeah oh i'm true. using zangi if i have his y hander and then it's like oh i'm picking up the uchi katana now i'm like a you uh -huh. know what i mean like you like the move list change your character moves different your swings are different your normals are heavier your normals are lighter you know so it actually gives you a different way to play dark souls different builds you know you give yourself a strength build or a faith build or a dex build whatever the hell you want to do in Sekiro, you're just the same guy with the same weapon you know so it you you don't get that uh variety at least i feel that way now i know other people mm -hmm. there is a skill tree but it's not like there's eight thousand skills and you can right. only equip one skill at a time as far as the skill tree goes you know uh -huh. like you unlock other things that actually stay with you that you can do always but there's certain moves where you can only equip one of now there is like the prosthetics that let you play a little bit different but right. when you use the prosthetics it's actually on a li limit so you can only do it x amount of times you got to like grind to pick up things that let you use the prosthetic so even so that you're kind of sort of playing the game almost the same way every time, which kind of hurt me. And the mm -hmm. one thing I love, love, love about Souls games and why Dark Souls is one of my favorite games ever is, now it happens a little bit in Sekiro, it happens in other Souls games too, but the way the world connects in Dark Souls 1 has never happened ever again. Yeah. And it is one of the best things yeah. in the world. Honestly, <laughs> that it is the most beautiful game design. Until later in the game, I will say, like... <laughs> Three fourths of that game is beautiful, and, and then you get to the end. <laughs> and then, like the last third is like, uh, but shouldn't this spit me out back into Firelink? It's like fucking yeah. no, dude. It does not. <laughs> you are way, yeah. you are miles away from Firelink, <laughs> my guy. Uh, you got to catch the, the L train back. You are yeah, all the, the way back. wrong part of town. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm with you on the Sekiro. Does that? It does not. It does it a little bit. It does it slightly. There is a lot of like off beaten path things where you can go one way. And there is like a there's parts where uh, once you get to a certain area, it kind of lets you go in a couple of different ways. Like I was talking to my friends like I fought this boss. and He's like, no, I fought this boss. I'm like, wait, but I did it this way, but he did it that way. So right. there there is like some some uh, freedom of exploration when you get to a certain part of the game and then the freedom of exploration closes off again towards the end part of the game so the middle you kind of have some some choice but the world doesn't necessarily connect as smooth as dark souls one did That's but true. then again what what game did honestly nothing yeah like nothing ever nothing ever yeah <laughs> and like may, maybe nothing ever in the future i don't know <laughs> it may be just that one special thing yeah. that we have that that particular map uh one thing you said that i stuck on and i feel like is very true is that in souls games picking a weapon picking a style of weapon mm -hmm. not dissimilar to character choice no uh, absolutely not not at all when you want that big heavy blow you want that spd yeah you get that big chunk of metal to throw at that's him. it absolutely you need, you need to have the stats for it because that's that's a whole other yeah, issue yeah. that is fucked up <clears throat> but for the but i'm in total agreement dragon bone sword 100 percent zangief man yep. right here Thank you. There you go. Yeah, we need a dragon bone. Get that strength up, my friend. Gotta get it up. <laughs> uh, but 
don't know. That's cool. Uh, so nothing like that, nothing that you saw or devs that you talked to in Japan about anything like that? that you can, no. no. Unfortunately, I have... I wish I had information. Chris, I am... I need a new game. Like, I wish I could be like, yo, I saw something that made my head fall off. Like, I wish I could say that, but right. unfortunately, I cannot. Like, What would have been funny is if you saw Sam show here in the U.S. and then went to Japan and played MK11. <laughs> ass backwards <laughs> that would be like the ulti- and like they have translators there for some reason ass as backwards well. <laughs> yeah <laughs> now M- mk like i do get to give gotta give some love to mk like, i grew up on the yeah. mk franchise like i'm definitely excited for the game it's but like i don't i don't know like i i think i'm upset and i hate to say this because it happens all the time where mm-hmm. people talk about it very often i just hope that Street Fighter is being worked on, if that makes sense. I don't care if it's five. I don't care if it's six. But I just hope that there's that the heart is still beating, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? That's all. Yes. And to that end, I'll just take a a quick aside here. It's in the show notes. Uh, but right now, it's funny that you say that. Uh, right now, our Street Fighter is running a basically a continuation of a poll that started yeah the poll yeah three years ago we started this shit of and it's it's changed form over the years uh, in how it's been presented and how it's been been taken uh but this one a culmination of three years of people having suggestions of what they want changed in street fighter 5 we've Mm -hmm. taken your suggestions we've crossed things off the list that have been changed we have taken more in more suggestions in of what you want. Uh, no one this time around said Linux version that has been for the last, like (laughs) I remember that two and a half years. People were like, yo, remember Linux? And it's like, that is a fucking pipe dream. There is no way that's that's ever going to happen. But good as a reminder to be like, Hey, remember we got said that there's not going to be a Linux version. folks. (laughs) It's not happening. It's not, it's, (laughs) It's 2019, folks. Yeah. It's not happening. Uh, but regardless, uh, on our Street Fighter, you can go there. It's on the front page. I'll share the link in the show notes. You can see it. Uh, go to that. Take the poll. And then what we do with that is package it in a way, because the questions are separated in a way that makes sense, like things that are strictly netcode stick in the netcode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, right now, and this actually surprised me, uh, 878 people have taken the poll so far, even after it just starting it like late yesterday, uh, 878 people have taken it. 878 people have that have not voted. Netcode is number one. Really? That number in front of netcode is not 878. So, so this What's takes number one. Netcode clearly, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that number isn't 878, which I think is an interest. That is why I feel like this, the way that we do this is, is more, is important because it takes the entirety of the community. It's not just the loud voices on Twitter because the loud voices on Twitter would have you believe that netcode is the, the biggest problem. Granted, netcode is the biggest problem, but <laughs> Not everybody feels that way. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, to yes. have all of that represented in a way that is laser focused on the things that, hey, the dev team probably is running out of budget if they have any budget at all for Street Fighter Five. They can only work on so much at one time. Mm-hmm. What should we tell them? Go vote. Go do that. Yeah. And then we deliver that to our contacts at Capcom, and they have continually said that, like, not even the like the current staff at Capcom. I'm talking about even before them, like you remember Harrison? Anybody remember I that sure guy? I do. I, I love Harrison. He's a great guy. Harrison's my hero. Uh, but like even back, like these are helpful to them. So I feel like the it's important to get the word out and important to vote. So please go do so if you haven't already. With that said, uh, where were we? Street Fighter Five. Mm-hmm. T- I was talking about how I hope that there's still a beating heart left yes. in Street Fighter. I, I hope that there is, but also I don't know if you've noticed this, and this is something that I don't really understand. I mean, I guess I can from a human level, but I I don't 
identify with this in any way, but a lot, if whatever chance that certain people in the Mortal Kombat community have to be like Street Fighter's dead because MK is out now, I'm like, it doesn't. Those things don't. That's not how it works. Yeah, I I have a. Oh God, I'm gonna get myself in trouble. I feel it. <laughs> I can edit this out if you want. <laughs> no, I don't care. Let them have it. No, I I have an extreme, and I'm sure someone's gonna you know like. I'm not trying to put my foot in in my mouth and I don't think I've I've ever I've ever done this but there's nobody wins from shitting on A because you want B to be well. You 100%. know like nobody nobody really wins with that. You know it's especially when you're part of guys the word is the word is community. You know what I'm saying? Like the word is community. It's it's not yours, it's not mine, it's not this game, it's not that game. It's really a conglomeration of a bunch of people that just care about this one specific thing. Like, yeah, do we break up into subgenres? Like, yeah, okay, we do. But, you know, just let let this group be that group. And, you know right. what I'm saying? Guys want to guys want to say that they love Street Fighter Five. I'm going to say it right now. I don't hate Street Fighter Five like everyone else tweets about, that they hate it. Like, I don't hate that game. When I play the game, are there things I don't agree with? Shit, yeah. Are there things I don't agree with? Third Strike, yeah, and Third Strike is the best fighting game that's ever been made. But I, you know, like nothing is, <laughs> nothing is perfect, and I, I understand that. You know what I mean? I completely understand that. But it's just because what that does is that there, there are people that want to get into the scene, like mm -hmm. figureheads and people. Like I don't think you, you guys realize how important mm -hmm. your word is. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm. I, I I don't know what to say. Like, look, I can't. I, I don't even have words right now. No, it's like I, you guys are. We are all important to the scene. Like, if you're a part of mm -hmm. MK and you say fuck Street Fighter, fuck Tekken, fuck this, whatever you do, it it doesn't even matter. But that negative energy, dude, is is fed off of. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It gets people that you're hurting your scene sometimes too. You know what I mean? Like, and it doesn't have to be MK. I don't even want to be specific. It can be someone in Tekken that says screw mk it can really go in any way it doesn't really matter but just having those kind of conversations and being look i understand if you want to be vocal but when there's an open platform there's just certain ways you go about things i just i right. see it all the time on social media and it actually makes me cringe and i keep my mouth shut because i you know i'm not trying to start a fight or be in the middle of of eight thousand different things or whatever in this community in that community right i just feel like if you're a part of a community that is derived of all this shit, like let each each piece of it flourish and do its thing. We all mm -hmm. get our chance. Street Fighter comes out, Street Fighter's popping. Smash came out, Smash Smash is always popping. But Smash you know what I mean, like right like now. yeah. But you know what I mean, like a new Smash, Smash is popping. Injustice comes out, NRS is doing well. New MK comes out, that's great. Good job. You know, Guilty Gear comes out. You know, oh shit, Tekken Seven update. You know, like. Mm -hmm. Just let this stuff happen and just stop being like F this and F that and this game is dead because this game is coming out. The games will survive as long as people want to play them. But people voicing shit like that, like saying saying you don't like the game is different than saying this game is dead because this game is coming out. Because now what, what totally you're doing again different. is... Totally different. Yeah, it's completely different. Completely different, different words to say. Yeah, absolutely. It might not seem that way, but the nuance yeah, is important. Exactly. The nuance yeah, is important. Yeah, extremely important. Because they... I, Again, the people that see this stuff that want to get into the scene, it it just it looks sloppy. One, it just looks mm -hmm. ugly. You know what I mean? It looks ugly. And then you have a guy that might. What if someone likes Joe, right? And Joe says, "Oh, fuck MK." And, oh, I like Joe. Joe says, "Fuck MK." I'm not playing MK. Like I would never want to want to sway anybody's decisions like that mm -hmm. ever in my life, especially when it comes to joining the FGC. Like that's not the way this works, dude. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if everybody realizes that, but. It's really not the best thing to do. But hey, like everybody's entitled to their own words and to say their own shit and God bless everyone. I'm just saying for for me, when I see that stuff like happen online, I'm like, oh my God, why is this happening? But no, I I'm in hundred percent agreement because yeah, consider, that was a long rant, dude. I'm sorry. No, I just ran no, no, like the, right there. That is important to get out. That shit I think is so important for the community to move forward from. I'm I'm tired of it. I I mean, the, people who are very familiar with this show have heard me do that same rant number like mm -hmm. for years, uh, <laughs> in in different cuts. But consider the situation, right? MK comes out, 
Right. I'm a figurehead of the MK community. And I, Mm -hmm. and I say something like, uh, MK is out. Other fighting games all are dead. MK is the only thing. Now I'm like, maybe I'm like a 12 year old and I see someone say that's that. what I'm saying. Yeah. And you I feed go into that you and I go, that. yeah, fuck other games. I only love MK four years from now though. The MK scene maybe it fizzles out a little bit cause it's a, it's been out for four years and mm-hmm. the, the competitive community just doesn't have the same verve that it had year mm-hmm. one, but I still hold in my, the reason why I got him into MK was because it fucked all those other games. Yeah. But now other games are coming out and other, well, what I do now, I guess I mm-hmm. just play d- dark souls now and don't play any, <laughs> any fighting games. I guess I'm out of the community. That's it's just crabs in a bucket folks. That's yeah. all it is. But instead, the the mentality should be rising tide raises all ships. I would love for tons of people to come in at MK and be like, yo, MK yeah. is fucking dope. I I would love for it to be a good game. Ha, make it have more more entrance at, at EVO. I don't give a fuck. I'm fucking glad Smash has more entrance at, yeah. at EVO because maybe it'll be the main game and I can go to bed earlier that night. <laughs> Seriously, dude, that's a fucking like that's people talk about grind. Staying up and watching all of <laughs> all of finals is <laughs> yeah, like grind that. <laughs> that's like that's a fucking endurance test. People don't talk about the endurance it takes to be like to, to be a spectator. <laughs> to, to even be a spectator of all that, <laughs> fuck. Or even like people, like the UK, I'm sure that would be happy oh, yeah, for yeah. an earlier finals at yeah. at Evo, even though that's probably not going to fucking happen. But the old yeah. man in me is like, can we get like yeah start it next start at 10? next game <laughs> next can we game? start at ten please? <laughs> uh, no, anyway, I'm listen, man, full agreement with that rant, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm sorry, I kind of went off right there. My no, bad. no, no, I'm it calm is, now. I'm I'm calmer. I'm calmer. I was getting loud. My hands. You should have seen my fucking hands. My Italian hands were flying around. You should have seen me over. Uh, no, I can see it. Trust whenever. Yeah. Now when there's there is a, a, a video archive of this podcast. Not a lot of people watch. It. I just keep it for like a backup. Uh, but there were hands flying on this side. You were talking, and I was throwing up hands. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I, hands hands were definitely moving over here, but In I'm range. glad that we agree. And I and I I just hope that eventually. We learn, you know what I mean? That's it. Or, or some, some of us learn, you know, right. that's all. Some of us learn. It's about, you know, the words community, guys. The word is community. The word is community, 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing I have to bring up, uh, not a question, but no good segue from this, just that I think is a positive thing uh, that our Street Fighter is doing, uh, is player sponsorships for Combo Breaker. Uh, that is our our first tournament that we're sending players to the season uh the other ones on the schedule are evo and the unannounced super premiere in november which i'm assuming is going to be the red bull event Uh, but those are at least the three that we're going to send players to we're only doing nominations right now uh only one more so when this podcast is released this is very time sensitive you have one day to well, the Thursday and the Friday to nominate players. You just need to say their name in that thread. It will be linked in the show notes. You can nominate yourself. I don't give a fuck. Uh, and then for the next week, we'll be voting. So if your name is on that list, it will go in the poll. We'll vote on those names. After we take uh, all that polling, the top two <coughs> at least will be sent to Combo Breaker. So I'm... At least I hope. I mean, we've shot for two every time. We've never missed our mark, so I'm, I'm gonna say that's that's what it'll be. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know who's gonna get the the spot. I, and I I keep myself. I recuse myself from from voting and for promoting players. So that's that's up to you cool. guys and the community. So please go ahead and engage with that, and we'll take care of the rest. Uh, Justin's been doing some stuff like that. Recently. Yeah, no, Justin, Justin's been doing, Justin's a man, dude. Justin, really till this is. day, I say it all the time, like when, when people ask me, I firmly think from the bottom of my heart that Justin is the most important player or like one of the most top three most important people to ever be involved in the scene. Yeah. I, uh, he's yeah. probably, he, he's probably my most important person. Like for me, 
specifically it's probably justin only because like i grew up with him playing and things like that so i have a little bit more invested in him that's your you know like on a, showing on, yeah exactly yeah on a personal level i definitely have more invested in him as you know like i said growing up with him he's he's a lot of the reason why i got good honestly mm-hmm. um so like i do owe that owe that man a lot and it's all it's always good to see him do his thing and you know be able to to do what he does and just be like you know what i'm at the level where i'm justin wong like He's a business fucking Echo man. Fox. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't. Yeah, fucking Mad Cats. Fuck, <laughs> fuck any sponsor that's ever happened to me. Like, I am. Imagine that. Like, yeah, I'm Justin. That's it. Like, that's so sick. Yeah. God bless him. <laughs> yeah. Put put that Wong. Put that J Wong in front. Yeah. Of you, exactly. Man. Three G's, homie. Three G's. <laughs> Count them. <laughs> no, uh, and that's cool. Uh, he's got a lot of freedom to sponsor whoever he wants, and he just does yeah. it because he wants to do it. That's something mm-hmm. that I think is is super cool. Him and Mena do something similar to that. Mena, I think, is another player who might not get as much coverage in the U.S. Uh, for what he does for his community. But yeah, but he did big things down there, right? Didn't he open up like a bunch of stuff for guys to play and things like that down there? Yeah, oh yeah, big things. He definitely yeah, helped awesome. his community like level up entirely. Like, <clears throat> used most of the money for from winning capcom cup to go directly back into his community and like that shit is that's yeah, awesome uh, but enough gushing over over players that aren't us uh <laughs> <laughs> honestly uh but uh and any other any other news that you have going on anything else you want to bring up before we start to Jeez. to end this episode we're, we're hitting I'm that trying mark. To, we're getting that yeah i'm trying to, i'm trying to think i feel like you know uh well, since we did talk about Samurai Showdown, some of the uh, on my YouTube channel, I do have the matches that I played against the devs on my YouTube channel. Ah, okay. So, um, uh, some some fair. I mean, it, this was also a while ago, but the the devs and the and Josh, the guy that I was playing, uh, mostly, uh, said that it is some of the of the best matches that they recorded during their sessions. So there is some pretty good footage on the YouTube channel for Samurai Showdown. Um. Other than that, like I don't know, you know, like when, like I said, when MK11 comes out, I'm gonna try and do some, do some streaming. Maybe, like I said, get back up to the YouTube content thing, and uh, that's it. Hopefully, maybe uh, compete in Street Fighter again sometime soon. <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> when six, yeah, when six comes out, maybe. <laughs> I mean, Sagat did come out, but Sagat isn't Sagat. Yeah, it's you know what it's like. I, it's funny. Like, I I like him. He yeah, just I love him. I, I think don't. He's great. I don't like. I don't like dealing with the shit you have to deal with in five <laughs> as yeah, Sagat. I've said sense. this before is that I love Sagat as a character in five. I love his, his design and how he yeah, plays. I do too. I love it. Yeah. But I don't think he plays well in five. Yeah. He's not it's a so, good street fighter five yeah, character. Yeah. He's, he's in the wrong game. He, yeah. He's in the wrong game. Now yeah. look, can people make him work? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like people can make it work and people can get dubs and things like that. Like that's also an argument that I don't like. Like, oh, people say the character sucks, but this guy wins. Yeah, it's like, no shit, Q sucks in third strike, and Kuroda beats everybody with Q. Yeah. Like, the, the man's a legend. That, you know, that's what, doesn't, yeah, exactly. He can make it work. People can make it work. It's just, you know, it's it's tough. That's all. Especially, like I said, dealing with Sagat, dealing with Street Fighter Five bullshit is, is tough. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. Uh, yeah. And especially with, like, armor, armored moves with gray health. Being a, yep. a KO now in, yep, in the K-K-O now, yeah, yep. doesn't help his his doesn't, his doesn't good V trigger. trigger. Yep, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, the other ones. Uh, God, the other one's not great. Honestly, yeah. I wish it was better. Uh, but that's just me wishing that projectiles me were better too. in Street Fighter Five. But me too. And I say that as a Zangief main. Think of how buck wild that <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, that's insane. I'm saying that, that projectiles need to be better. Yeah. What the fuck am I saying? Yeah, yeah. Someone put me in the hospital. My head's not right. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, <laughs> no, uh, but other than that, uh, I do kind of want to talk just very briefly, say that Give it again, to me. what was that? Let me hear it. Give it to me. Let me hear it. Japan was rad. I had a great time. Shout out to yeah, Doc so Fugu sick. out there, uh, <clears throat> being like the number one translator out of Japan. I would say like anything that's going on in Japan, I hit up that guy and he is fucking on it. <laughs> uh, he's also a great dude out there. Uh, Total joy to be around. Had a good time hanging, tam, hanging out with him. Uh, have you ever been to a Japanese onsen? Have you done the hot spring? I'm actually not allowed because of tattoos. Oh, the tattoos. That's right. Yes, I'm not allowed. Dang. There are some I can yeah. go to. 
but for the most part, I am not allowed. Ah, uh, there private ones you'd be able to go to. Yeah, ones yeah, some I can get into, but yeah. for the most part, the I know that there's I know that there's more that I can't get into than I can get into. Hundred percent. That's hundred yeah. percent true. And the ones that you I can, just, you'll probably have to pay a lot of money yeah. to get into. Um, I have a story super quick. My friend went. His girlfriend has a. I don't want to give away who it is. Just because talking about someone else's girlfriend, but that's you fair. guys know him in the community. His girlfriend has a tat had a tattoo on the inside of her middle finger, like on the side of her middle finger. You can and cover that they up were, by just closing your hand. Dude, they were going to they 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 were in. They were like getting ready to walk, and they paid for it. And the guy was like, "What? Oh, what?" Oh. I was like pointing at her finger, and they wouldn't let him in. Dang. Yeah. Strict True story. rules, man. True story. I but that's that's the rules. You gotta follow that's the what rules. It is. Yeah, that's what it is, man. It's yeah, it's Japan, dude. Uh, right. there there are sometimes big signs that say don't go. Um yeah. <laughs> if you do get a chance though to go out to like a private one where you have it like like a Ryukan in your in your room. Oh man. But my wife and I treated ourselves to a luxurious experience. <laughs> uh holy shit, I felt like a fucking king, dude. That's awesome, dude. Open That's air sick. bath, like what you can walk out to from the room. That's pretty dope. And it's got that like it's like that mineral water that make I don't know if anyone hey, hey listeners to this podcast, I don't know if you've been submerged in some mineral water and how it <laughs> makes you all slippery and weird. It's it's real good. It's real good, fam. Uh, <laughs> so I highly recommend it if you can. But I understand tattoos. That's a that's a big no go. Yeah, big no, big no, no. Unfortunately, uh, also hit up Kyoto. Uh, yes, I need to do that. I to, need to do that. Oh yeah, you totally do. It's that's like just another beautiful city. A little bit more spread out than Tokyo, so it's <laughs> like it feels a lot more. Or I guess less busy, but still yep. busy because yep. fucking Japan, it's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would say is take a day trip to Nara, uh, which it, it, it's got all of this forest space, not really forest, like park space, just infinite wild deer. That's cool. Tons of them just walking around and they sell these like little cookies and you you feed they oh, you feed the deer oh yeah you 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 do oh, a bow they bow deer. to you oh, and so then sick. they get they get a they get a treat sometimes they get pissed off and bite the tip of your dick but that's <laughs> I mean they're just being greedy bastards yeah uh, but there's just a bunch of really chill cool deer that will bow take their cookie and be and be cool about it. Uh, that was <laughs> honestly getting bit in the dick was my fault because my wife was very excited to feed the deer. She's like, we need to get a bunch of cookies. So we got like four at the same time. So I'm like holding this bag full of cookies and this asshole uh, deer's like, I, I see, see those goddamn and just right tip of the nest right there. Right? I see. I see what uh, happened. Robot restaurant. Have you seen robot restaurant? I've heard of it. Yes, I've never been though. It is American as fuck, but Japanese burlesque. I went with someone who was from Japan, like Japanese native, uh, and she, like her face the whole time was like a, a look of conf of raw confusion. <laughs> her mouth was agape the whole time and kind of looking side eyed, like like what. What is happening? <laughs> but it was very telling that like one of the signs that they held up, I forget why or what was on the fucking sign, but I leaned over and I was like, I, I know this is for Americans because there's no Japanese on that sign. That sign is only in English. <laughs> uh, but what was most impressive about Robot Restaurant, I mean, it's this big flashy show. There's like big drums and people come out on these floats and big robots and shit. The most impressive thing I thought was like, where are they hiding all them robots? <laughs> How do they get them out? How do they get them in there? Like, <laughs> like, cause you're in a, a like a small basement and they, they just keep coming. There's just a bunch of them. Uh, and space ain't cheap in Japan. Holy no, shit. it's not. Uh, but I would recommend doing all of that. Uh, listener on your next trip or your first trip to Japan. It was a good time. Um, yeah, it's an amazing time. Highly recommend everyone experience it. Hundred percent. Good, good food. Ramen, delicious. Uh, 
Oh, one of my favorite meals. Oh, it's so good. Um, sushi, great. I actually having someone from. Have you ever been to like the Golden Guy bar, strip of bars? No. I was with a small group with <clears throat> one person who could speak Japanese because they're fucking from Japan. Uh, and we just like rolled up into this bar that was only four. It was five stools and we just owned it. It was like the most that's incredible cool. like experience. And the, the woman yeah, who was cool. serving only spoke Japanese. It was ah, such a good experience. I highly that's recommend cool. it for everyone. Uh, but other than that, Japan's great. We both agree. We're going to head into the end of this show, unless there's anything else you need to pitch right now. No, I can't really think of anything. I wish I had more. I wish I was. I wish I was more more interesting nowadays. But I'm not. I'm just a. I'm I'm just an old man that works. That's it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's the <laughs> that's, that's, that's the fucking grind. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> People that's talk it. about like the fighting game grind, like going like nine to nine to five is a fucking grind. Yeah, get um, get up at three twenty every day. Yeah, Oof, that's early. I, and I, and I wake 20. up at five. God damn. I'm up at three. I'm I'm already in work for a half hour oh, when you're shit, getting dude. up. <laughs> that's that's impressive, honestly. <laughs> uh, but doesn't it at that time, isn't it weird to see like all, my, all your West Coast friends from the FGC being like, all right, that was a great stream. Good night, folks. As yeah, you it's, are, like, it's the word. Work. Yeah, it's pisses, pisses me off, dude. I get so <laughs> mad. I'm like, it's, this sucks. I'm quitting. Mm, yeah, that is a, <laughs> for people who have never been up at that hour on the East Coast. It's like, you fucking kids. You fucking yeah. children. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... <laughs> Did this guys work? Does anyone do anything over there in the West Coast? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Are you guys like, don't you have responsibilities? Yeah. You child, you fucking child. Uh, I feel that all the time. Uh, every day. Don't check yeah. Twitter <laughs> at, at yeah. 5 a.m. It's fucked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing I will pitch, we did talk about Dark Souls earlier in Souls games. Mm -hmm. I would recommend anyone go check out Epic Name Bro EMB oh, Marcus. Oh my god, Marcus. He's he kind of comes at it with a fighting game mentality. Uh, Marcus is the man. I had the pleasure of meeting him at a private Sekiro screening word. about a couple months ago. Yeah, great great guy. Great mm -hmm. guy. So warm. Unbelievably warm. Mm -hmm. Like I met him for the first time. It was like I known him for 5 years. <laughs> Oh man, it was crazy. That's because you can just bond over that uh, the familiarity yeah. of of mm -hmm. loving Souls game. He because yep. he he so earnestly loves the games and the lore. Yep. It's just it's very evident in the content that he makes. Mm -hmm. So if if you want that to be if you are not willing to play the games, maybe uh, and you have you want to watch some <clears throat> YouTube videos as you are grinding Street Fighter, check him out. He's got some good shit. Absolutely, out there. he does. Yeah, he's the man. Uh, but anyway, before I let you go, and before we end this podcast, I have to ask you a line of questioning that I ask everyone who comes on this show for the first time. Go. Uh, it's a two-parter. Okay. First part. What is your favorite normal attack in any fighting game? Oh, Jesus Christ. Favorite normal attack in any fighting game. Because I actually think I was thinking of this today because I, I revisit this question every time I ask it every week. And for the longest time, it's been Zangief's stand hard punch in Street Fighter 4. It's fucking violent as hell. Knocks down. Counter hit you can juggle. It's fantastic. It just it's brutal. But I might even I was thinking today how Maru's heavy slash might might be that's a good one might be that's that's me. a really good one that's a really good one because it fucking um, hurts man and it's mm, hit stop on that one baby delicious favorite normal like i feel like i'm gonna say something that's that's i guess kind of more obvious but i feel like later tonight i'm gonna tweet it i'm just gonna tweet this character this button <laughs> okay. i feel it i It'll feel it you. But, It'll hit you later. but yeah but but right now the first can i say two you can do whatever you want. I've allowed, right. listen, I plays it fast and loose with the rules around here. So you go right <laughs> ahead. Um, Sagat Crouch Hard Punch from CBS 2. 100%. And Ken Stan Roundhouse from Third Strike. Ooh, okay. That Could is a nice button. Describe why. First, with Sagat's Crouching Heavy Punch. Well, that's just the greatest button of all time, like yeah, property maybe. wise and everything else. <laughs> it's it, it it might be one of the greatest buttons, 
that has ever been buttoned. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> ever been mapped to a controller. That, yeah. That's ever been buttoned would be Crouch Hard Punch in CBS2. Um and Ken's Ken's I I like that button. It's just like I like the way it looks. I like the chunk of health. It feels good when you hit it clean from a nice distance when you when you you know uh, I don't know. Just a, a very satisfying button to land is Ken's Stand around house. Nice it's got button. Good, nice it's got button. good range. It gets. Yeah, it's out got good there. range. It's like meaty. It's like kind of fat. You know what yeah, I mean? It's got yeah, yeah. It sounds good. It looks good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can stand around. That's a nice one. Yeah, there's an aesthetic um, to it. There is, yeah. But I'm sure in like three hours, I'm gonna take a shower and get out and be like, shit, this is the best button ever. I don't but know I if any. Like honestly, I I would have guessed a for you a Sagat crouching hard punch. Honestly, that's yeah. That's that's like it makes sense. It makes sense. It's tough. Yeah, that's to a beat. great button. That's a great button. Uh, <clears throat> with that in mind, part two of the question kind of an extension of this question not necessarily with the buttons that you chose but what is your favorite combo in any fighting game mm. actually not nec- like not applicable really at all with the buttons that you selected <laughs> granted you don't have to start your like <clears throat> it could be um, different my favorite just combo any fighting game you don't even necessarily have to it doesn't even have to be characters that you play i'm gonna say the rom infinite from marvel 2 <laughs> that's a good one and you're not the first hearing person to it say that one. That's like a, hearing it yes. and and seeing it it's just like <laughs> oh that sounds so cool especially like when he does it on iron man and said it's like click 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 mm-hmm. click 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 it makes a clicky sound like he's hitting metal oh mm-hmm. god so good i would i would probably say the rom infinite Ron Memphis is too sick. That's a good answer. And the other person who, who gave that answer also said because of the, there's a cadence to that combo that when you hear it, like if someone <clears throat> played in like, like an SOS, like uh, just like a, uh, fucking morse code i know what of, you mean yeah you that. Would, i would definitely know it's a rom i would know 100 percent. like that's rom <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have someone there who speaks yeah. morse co- or like can understand yeah. morse code oh that's i don't know what the fuck let that's just a jumble of letters I, like, I, a spelling I like, rom dude, that's, combo. Don't you, don't yeah that is that is hyper dash <laughs> down forward like kick, like a hyper dead like you don't hear it <laughs> you don't hear you don't hear that's it? super jump down forward like listen like kick, like kick. I don't like know, this is like a JFQ yeah. this is nonsense nah dude you're missing it yeah I, I would I would probably say the ROM ROM is so sick nah, good answer Asked thank you and answered thank you uh, that's a show folks uh, before that's we it. go the last where can people find you on the internet where should people look for long all right the Joe? internet uh, we have uh, this is LI Joe is the Twitter Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Li Joe is the Twitch. Uh, Facebook is Li Joe. I don't even really use Facebook. Uh, Li Joe with Charmelli is my last name, and I'm not even sure if I have a real YouTube link. I, like I don't think I, I do. Don't think you have? It's I don't think I do because I'm a bum. It. That's fine. I'm a bum. It'll be linked in I the show you. notes, and it'll be a fucking Thank nightmare. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna look like. Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like. Yes, but <laughs> th- yeah. <it's> just, <laughs> oh, and I just recently started using Instagram, which is also, I think this is L.I. Joe. Brand solidarity, folks. It's very important. Yes, uh, I tried. I tried. No, nah, I'm with it. Uh, except for your Facebook, of course, but that's so 2000 and late that. Yeah, like who matter. even uses Facebook? I don't even use that thing. It's just there. Yeah, only everybody's local still uses it. Uh, yeah. But. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fighting game community in 2019. God damn it. Uh, anyway, folks, that's a show. You can find me at Super Joe Monday on Twitter.com or at Reddit SF, which is the account for our Street Fighter. Or just go hop on our Street Fighter, hit up the mods. I'm always there. Uh, feel free to DM. Those DMs are open, baby. Uh, but that's slide a show. in, slide right on in, slide in, boy. Vega Crouch Roundhouse all day. Vega sweep all day <laughs> into those <laughs> into those DMs. Uh, that's a show. Uh, we'll be back every Thursday. Don't forget about the tournaments. East Coast is Monday nights. West Coast is Friday nights. Hit those up. Uh, strong competition, by the way. It's been ever since like I want to say like 
maybe five or six weeks ago, people have been like really ramping up and it's fucking hard. It's fucking hard to win those tournaments. Uh, yeah, but... I see some of the clips that 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 you guys put. I'm like, damn, like this guy's playing now too. Like, yeah, it looks sick. like it's getting serious. Yeah, it's getting it's getting pretty real. It's getting pretty hot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but that sometimes dissuades people into saying like, oh, these are like all oh, grandmasters, super dime. I can't even. I can't throw hands. To which I say, do it anyway. Get your yeah, ass go whooped. fuck them up. Yeah, get your ass whooped even, and then we have a round robin that you can just hop into to get more matches. And guess yep. what? If someone beats your ass, fucking ask them how they beat your ass. Mm -hmm. They're all nice enough to answer. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't no jerks. Ain't no jerks out here. Ain't no jerks. We run a, we run a tight ship. But anyway, that's a, that's a podcast, folks. We'll see you again every Thursday night. But until next time, folks, take care.